This is episode nine, I believe. Uh, it's one of our voting products. Uh, just for clarification, I want to mention this uh, video is being produced and uploaded to YouTube uh, by 1169135 uh, Ontario Inc. Uh, 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 company incorporated in Ontario, Canada. And if you're interested in why I make that statement, you can look at, uh, watch our previous uh, episode, I think it's episode 8, concerning uh, how not to be sued on YouTube. But for now, I just wanted to uh, say this is uh, this upcoming video. This uh, episode is concerning voting safety, and it's not the traditional um, um, things you'll bring on board, like life jackets and and uh, flares and that sort of thing. It's uh, life and death situations that can arise from uh, heavy water, uh, high, uh, high volume uh, following seas, big waves crashing over the stern, and how to prevent that happening if you have uh, engine failure. And uh, I'll go into details in a bit, and it has some other uh, tips as well. And there goes my shallow alarm alert, which we're turning off right now, and we'll have to get back on, get the motor going again and getting into deeper water so we can get some fish. So we'll, I hope you enjoy this episode and we'll talk to you later. Don't forget to subscribe at any time uh, during this video. Thank you. But uh, what I had was a problem, an issue was when I got down to Florida, I saw most of the boats out there had two engines. And I thought that if you're, you're off 12 or 15 miles out into the uh, Gulf of Mexico, you don't want to be with one engine when, when one fails. For a number of reasons, and I'll go into that in in a bit. But for now, let's say uh, if we have only one engine on here and one fails, then you're basically at the mercy of the of the waves and the wind, uh, regardless of whether you're in a sailboat or um, a powerboat. If you have no power, uh, if you have no propulsion, you've got problems. So what I did was I added a second motor here. You see the little 25 horsepower, which uh, some people think is excessive for. Uh, trolling motor. It's not really a trolling motor. It's, it's strictly a backup motor for in the event of a one motor fails. If the main one fails, you have real problems. Uh, and if you have a, a, a large waves, you don't have today on Lake Simcoe, but if you're in the ocean, in the Gulf of Mexico, anywhere, then you have a following sea and it can very easily swamp the boat. And uh, if you cannot uh, face your boat into the into the waves you've got a real problem very quickly uh, in this boat uh, it specifically has a problem because it has a very uh, low transom and even now you see some a uh, bit of water splashing over into the uh, into the motor well which is fine they have drain uh, ports there so it's not a not a big issue but if you have too many waves coming over uh, for too long a period of time you're gonna have issues so one of the ways of doing that is if your motor fails is to ensure that you are facing into the wind or into the waves I should say and the main way of doing that is uh, with a secondary engine that is independent of the main one so if you have issues uh, and, and this uh, upboard this little upboard here is totally independent you can very often have them um, linked with a, a bar between uh, the main motor and the small one where whenever you turn the, the main engine the small one will turn at the same time so even if your engine conks out you still have the steering but you can very often have uh, steering issues as well you can have a hydraulic issue you can you know the motor can uh, hit a rock or a reef or something and, it, and it'll be uh, inoperable uh, so you want something totally independent. So this one is not linked. The other thing is that it's not linked as far as fuel goes. They're both uh, four-stroke uh, uh, four engines, which means they uh, they run on raw gas, no oil mixture, which is great. It's great for for running, great for the environment. But one of the problems with linking engines with uh, on the same fuel is if you have contaminated fuel or if you run out of gas. In either event, both engines shut down, not just one, and then you have the same problem of not being able to face your your boat into the uh, into the waves. So they say in emergencies, what your best bet is to do is to just anchor, anchor, throw at your anchor, and your anchor will automatically uh, cause your boat to face into the waves, and you won't have a problem with with swamping. Unfortunately. It's, if you're out in two or three or four hundred feet of water sometimes you just don't have enough uh, anchor line and uh, you, then you have the problems and it's, it could be quite frankly a life and death situation where your 
boat can be swamped, it can sink if you have waves two or three or four feet, you know, a meter or two coming over the back of your boat and swamping it and it doesn't have a chance to drain out. So this boat is, is not bad, it has uh, adequate draining, it drains from the, from the, uh, from the floor of the cockpit into, uh, into the uh, engine well and out the back, that's not an issue. But the, uh, as I uh, will show in a minute from a, from a rear shot, from a stern shot, that there's very little uh, distance between the top of the transom where the motor mounts to the water, it's only about four to six inches. This is just a short clip showing the stern of the boat with the two motors on the back. And you'll see that uh, from the distance between where the water and the uh, top of the uh, of the transom is, is only about four to six inches. So that's not a great deal. But very often. So that's not a not a big issue, except when you get a lot of uh, heavy seas and and uh, um, a, a uh, an issue where your motor dies and you simply. Uh, cannot for, uh, face the boat into the waves. So this uh, little one has totally independent starting. There's another issue if you're main engine that the, uh, if there's ignition problem, uh, you can have steering problem, you can have a fuel problem. And then you can have mechanical problems such as uh, bent props and that sort of thing or, or just uh, simply a, a motor that is, that is defective in some way. Whereas this one is totally independent. It's totally uh, uh, um, isolated ignition. It's a remote start. You can either crank it, uh, crank start and it does crank uh, up on, on the first try. Very easy to do. And it has its own uh, gas system and I have oh, maybe 10 or 15 gallons uh, of, of uh, fuel here and I've calculated roughly because of the, the very little gas that it uses this motor can with that that tank that gas supply would get me about 40 miles like you know 50 60 kilometers and that's plenty enough to get you back to shore this is uh, the video was not meant to be comprehensive in the sense that it's covering all issues of safety on your boat it certainly does not you just want to be aware of those issues and why I have uh, two separate motors totally independent uh, not uh, attached in any way so any system that fails on one you have a uh, totally independent motor that will will uh, get you around uh, in case of emergency now this uh, little motor is a 25 horse it's a uh, we use it for trolling a bit too but it's mainly there for safety and uh, we've done tests that it will get us running at about five, five and a half knots at uh, three quarter, uh, three quarter uh, throttle and it runs beautifully, it doesn't use much gas at all so we're quite happy with it. And in a moment we'll show you how to uh, work with a, a sea anchor uh, to, uh, in the case of emergencies. Thank you. Anyway, uh, Meek was just, uh, we just uh, lost a hook in, on uh, from Meek's line, my fault actually, when I was driving the boat and I didn't know she had a line in the water, so we had to replace that. And now she's finally got the idea that I put a really big hook on her, <laughs> on her line because that means she's going to get big fish now instead of all those tiny ones that we've been uh, struggling with over the last couple of weeks. So let's get some big fish here, Meek, okay? And we'll have something nice to eat for dinner. Okay. Meanwhile, we're going to go back to the safety issues. And the safety issue that I want to show you right now is very, very important. And again, this is what considered life and death uh, in some cases. If you're uh, uh, alone on a boat, or even if you're not, uh, you can uh, quite quickly get into problems. You might hit something uh, that's uh, in the water, not necessarily submerged, but some debris. Uh, you uh, may be tossed overboard. Hopefully you have a life jacket on. Uh, but uh, in any event, you probably will not have your swim ladder out. <laughs> you don't drive along at 40 miles an hour in a boat like, like this and when a fishing boat and fall overboard and uh, uh, with a swim ladder overboard so you have to have some way of getting up on board and me being a senior I used to in my 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s be able to do that quite easily now I, I'm not so sure as a matter of fact I had an incident in, uh, in uh, Fort Myers at the marina there one time where I had to be assistant in the boat because I didn't have the didn't set the precautions for for getting on board if I fell overboard. And I actually went overboard f fishing for a, a cell phone that fell into the marina water and I tried to retrieve it. And I was successful, that's another story. But for now, what I always do is somewhere along the, the boat, uh, preferably on either side, is you just have a line. And it could be anywhere between five to eight feet long and just leave it dangling. So that if you fall overboard, you can get to the 
to the boat, but you may not be able to climb in. And that may sound silly to some people who are athletes and so on, but as you get a little bit older and you're not used to, uh, maybe not as in good shape as you, you should be or, or used to be, if this line is anywhere here, you can at least reach up to grab the line and toss it and pull it into the water with you. And if you note that the way I have it set up is it has a, a loop in it. So that loop can be used for you know, two things. You can uh, either use it as a stepping loop so you can step up and into the side of the boat, or you can just simply wrap it around your wrist and you can wait for, uh, for someone to uh, assist you, to rescue you, to, you know, as long as you stay with the boat, you should be fine, uh, as long as there's no sharks in the water. <laughs> but uh, that's, uh, it's better than uh, uh, not being able to, uh, to get into the boat at all. And remember, sometimes you might fall overboard and the boat might be drifting, and it may be quite a swim for you to catch up to it if it's drifting at three or four or five miles an hour. So do something like that, and leave it on both sides, and uh, it's a very good safety technique for helping you to get back in the boat, or at least staying with the boat, uh, when you don't have anyone else to assist you. The other thing is that uh, on both the outboard, you'll notice that red cord, and, and, and most boaters will be aware of this, it's a, it's a, a kill switch. Basically, you should be tying that to uh, to your wrist or to your belt when you're uh, traveling in the boat, especially alone, so that if you do fall overboard, the, the engine will stop automatically and you'll have a chance to uh, swim to the boat and, and climb back in. Uh, we have another kill switch on the uh, similar uh, kill uh, switch cord at the main um, ignition for the large motor. I won't show you that because the dash is a little bit grubby right now, so we'll uh, show you that some other time. But I always use that when I'm uh, operating the uh, that motor. The other thing is, uh, if you do have to switch to the auxiliary motor and your uh, steering uh, and your main motor is gone, you, mean, you don't have to have a separate uh, steering system for the auxiliary motor. It has, uh, it, it obviously turns, it, uh, it lowers down to the water, it's on a, on a heavy duty mount that I added there to, uh, for uh, ocean work and for uh, trailering because it takes quite a beating when you're driving over railway tracks and so on, but so it's an oversized mount which is a very good investment for me. It's rated for uh, a motor of about uh, 250 pounds and this motor is about 136 pounds I believe. So. Um, uh, if the you don't necessarily have to sit back here and, and steer with the with the uh, the uh, steering handle there on this little motor, you can set it in one one position, and you can still uh, turn this motor through the main steering. And even though it doesn't have a power to it, the motor itself will act as a bit of a rudder, almost like on a sailboat, and help with steering to a certain extent. And then when you have to, every once in a while, you walk back to the back and. Uh, and change the direction of the uh, of the auxiliary motor. So I hope that helps, and uh, we'll get into the uh, sea anchor in a, in a second. Thank you. So what I want to show you now is this is the um, uh, sea anchor that's stored away uh, in a in a pack, and it's uh, so it's very easy to keep handy. It's, it's uh, only about two feet long, about a foot and a half wide, so it's very easy to to store. It's a uh, uh, if you are out in the ocean, any distance from land, then it's almost vital. If you uh, are operating a power boat, uh, that you need to be uh, held into the waves to prevent swamping. So I'll unpackage that and I'll show you how it works in a minute. Thank you. This is the first time we've ever used the uh, sea anchor, so this is more of a trial and error. And uh, Meek, I don't think has ever has even seen one before. So it's now laid out on the on the foredeck here. And as you can see, it's just basically a big sock. It's attached to a, uh, a line um, right here. And as soon as we get this untangled, to show you, it's just attached to a spare anchor line here. And what we're gonna do is, Meek is just gonna toss it over so that it fills with water. Just toss it over. Don't go over with it. Don't go over with it. And I've got the other line here, so don't worry about it. Yeah, pass it over. Mika's gonna just throw this overboard and we can see what happens. Okay. One. You don't have to count. <laughs> just throw it overboard. Oh. One, throw it overboard. Two, three. Thank you. Okay, now this is tied on to this line. Just let it go. And it will fill with water eventually. Oh, before I forget, uh, very, very important, don't forget to uh, subscribe to our channel. Um, it should be displayed over to the uh, 
lower right side of the screen, is that the right? Left side, left side of the screen, sorry. And, um, and you don't necessarily have to wait for that button to, uh, to, uh, to pop up to subscribe. Just uh, pause the video and uh, scroll over to the left and you'll see different options there. It'll show you how to subscribe, how to like, and how to dislike if you, if you want to do it that way. Thank you very much and I'll continue on with the video now. Okay, so according to Meek, it's uh, in the cone shape already. Yeah. It's just a matter of uh, having enough waves to turn the stern around, and that's happening right now. Stern, stern's starting to turn. You can see the direction of the waves uh, off the stern is changing quite a bit. Here we have the, uh, the sea anchor starting to be pointed in the direction of the, w the waves are coming. You can see how it's filled with water. And again, this isn't the best day for it. It's very light uh, wind and uh, very few waves, but it, it is working exactly doing what it's supposed to do. The stern of the boat is turning around uh, towards the land, and the bow is turning into the waves, which is exactly what it's supposed to do. Now, with, uh, with more waves and, and uh, uh, this would happen a little sooner but already the boat is turning around so it's facing the waves again it's a safety feature so that you aren't um, uh, uh, taking waves these waves that are now coming towards the bow would have been coming towards the stern and if it uh, is in the ocean or uh, uh, a big lake with a lot of uh, high waves again that could easily swamp your boat from the stern and if you don't have enough bilge bilge is working or a, a hand pump which we also have as well uh, it, you may be in a lot of trouble so here we go it's facing starting to face us now into the waves it's hard to see on, on the video but it's starting to face us into the waves and it's basically slowing down the movement of the bow relative to the stern so the stern turns around and the boat is still moves with the waves but it's being it's being uh, pushed backwards instead of frontwards and the waves will be hitting the bow instead of the stern so that's basically it. Uh, I'm going to get uh, Meek to pull this up and I'll show you how to retrieve it. If you see that there's a yellow cord on that, uh, on, the, on, the, uh, on the anchor, now that anchor just floats on top, it doesn't go down to the bottom, so that's the way exactly I'm supposed to do. And Monique uh, will pull it in just a bit. And so because it's going to be full of water, you can't pull that up. So what she will do as soon as she gets closer to the boat is reach down and uh, grab that yellow cord and that yellow cord is attached to the bottom of the of the anchor and what it does is as soon as you get that cord up within reaching distance and which is about now so instead of trying to pull the whole thing out of the water you just pull that yellow cord and you can let go of the black one now uh, Meek and it, it now you're you're picking it up just let go of the black one it's yeah. tied it's tied up here to the black Okay, so no, just let go, let go of this and pull, pull this, pull this one. Okay, so now you pull that. Now it's pulling it from the bottom, and all the water is being spilled out. And so it, it's so it's a little heavy, still 10 or 15 pounds, but all the water is out. Very easy to retrieve it. All right. So and then you dry it out and package it and repackage it and use it only when you have to. It's going to be, it should be uh, available f for emergencies. Uh, to you can deploy it in about uh, uh, you know one or two minutes if you really have to. Okay. So that's it for this. And Monique's going to say goodbye. <laughs> Thank you very much for your assistance, Meek. And we'll talk to all our uh, viewers later. Thank you. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much.